Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. First off, before I start, I want to wish everybody a happy new year. I hope that 2022 has started off well for you, and I hope that the year has nothing but great things for you. And I want to thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for liking and subscribing and, and following me and supporting me. It means the world to me. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Psych OS. Now, this operating system is truly amazing to me. Basically, what it's focusing on is older hardware. Do you have a computer that's 15, maybe 20 years old, and you want to use it, but there's nothing out there that's working for you? This is the operating system for you. PsychOS's methodology is they want to create an operating system for 32-bit systems, i686, plus they want to go even further back to i486 and i386. They even have a version that they're working on called PsychDOS. So this out-of-the-box experience that you're going to get with this on older systems is going to be amazing. Now, what I do want to go into is it is based on Devon Linux, which is a Debian-based Linux distribution. It is systemd free. That makes it lighter, obviously. And it's already packed with tons of software and scripts. So you have an out-of-the-box experience that is something that is amazing. Now, my gist of this distribution is that they want you to be able to install it and just use it. Now, if there's software that you want to go out there and get, obviously you can get it and they give you several different ways to get it. It's pretty impressive. Now, if you do boot this into a live system, the default password is Linux. The current release is 3.4.6 and it's codenamed Insanity. The kernel that they're using is 4.9.0-8RT 686PAE. Now, it doesn't have a 4 gigabyte limit either, so that comes in handy for those of you who have files that are greater than 4 gigabytes. This operating system can handle it. Desktop environment is XFCE with the ICE window manager, or you can boot it straight into Kodi as a media center. Package management, this is what I was talking about. You can do it by apt, pip, gem, rpm, yum, pack apt, and alien. He wanted to include zipper, but it was just too much. It was too big. It has over 3,000 installed packages, 90 plus Python modules, 390 plus supported file formats. They've customized Thunar actions, and they've customized .bash RC for quickly doing things in the command line for when climax isn't enough. And then DOS software included with RetroGrab to add more. Now, if you're kind of a retro person, you like the older hardware, you like keeping it around, you like making it useful, PsychOS is for you. And they kind of give you a look that goes along with that. So what I'm going to do right now is we're going to leave their web page. And I'll be sure to link it in the description below. And we'll go over and take a look at the desktop. Now, if you download PsychOS, throw it on a USB or put it in a virtual machine to take it for a test drive, this is the screen you're met with. I do want to apologize for the black bars on the side. I couldn't get it to go all the way to 1080. It would only go to 1050. So that's where we're at there. It'll boot up with this little message right here. It says notes. Welcome to Psych OS. Before beginning, please take the time to read the documentation. They show you the directory it's in. For ways to contact or see other projects, visit them at their GitLab. And to remove this note permanently, right-click the top bar and choose delete. So we're going to go ahead and right-click and delete. And it is gone. We have a clean desktop. Now, if you look up here, the only thing on the desktop is install. It has a nice background out of the box, but you can go over here and change it if you wanted to. There's the backgrounds that you have to choose from. You could change it just to a plane. You could change it to like that. That's a good looking one. I like that. And then they also have the what I call the electric or neon butterfly. And then, of course, that one's pretty cool looking. I think I'll leave that one up. That's pretty different looking. And then you've got other things that you can change here. Folder background, solid colors, style. If you wanted to change the style of the wallpaper from stretch to landscape, scale, zoom, centered, you know what I mean there. Then you go over to menus, and you've got your regular XFC menu layout here. You can include application menus on the desktop, show window list menus on the desktop, just a bunch of different ways to customize it there. Then you go over to icons. You can change your icon sizes if you want. It's at 32. You could bump that up if you wanted to. And as you notice, that icon just got bigger. And then, of course, show icon tooltips. And then down here, you could add home if you wanted to, file system, trash. You can pretty much control what's being shown on your desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. We'll go ahead and right-click again. 
and you can open window, create launcher, create folder, create document, open terminal. Let's go ahead and open the terminal. I want to take a look at what kind of resources we're using. I'm going to say it doesn't have HTOP, so we'll go with top. And right now I have three gigabytes of RAM issued to this machine. We are using at rest with just the terminal open, 233 megabytes. Now that is light, guys. That is something that if you throw in on a 15 to 20 year old PC, you're going to be able to move around in quite comfortably and it's not going to lag you out to where you just want to shut it down and not use it anymore. Also, if this is something you might want to put on newer hardware, this thing will literally fly. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of the terminal. Let's go ahead and right click back into it. You've got ownership to root, ownership to user. Create sim link, download copied URL, arrange desktop icons. Then you have properties. You can click on that, and it'll just show you your desktop folders properties. And then, of course, with it being XFCE, you can come down here to applications, and you can access everything right here. We do have the app menu over here as well, so we will look at that in a moment. Now, I do want to show you the browser that they have. It opens up rather quickly, and it's Pale Moon. So if you go over here, it just says you've successfully installed or upgraded the Pale Moon web browser. Now, right now, I want to see what kind of search engine they have. They are using DuckDuckGo out of the box. And as you can see, eBush Central shows up right here. Buy me a coffee, YouTube. So that's what you have. Now, Pale Moon does sometimes offer you to buy what they call, let me go to the home page, and like I said down here, become a pro, faster loading, no ads, more features. They charge $20 a year. You don't have to pay that. Obviously, if you want to download a different browser, you can. Pale Moon does run well in lighter environments. You can change the home page so this doesn't pop up, but you do have over here the Pale Moon Home. You have their add-ons and the forum. And then Pale Moon Announcement says Happy New Year. And it goes through some things there. And then resources, quick links to Wikipedia, World News, and Gadget, Life Hacker, Afterburst. And then, of course, you can set up your social media accounts up here. Everything from Facebook to Pinterest. And then shopping, eBay to Home Depot. And then your email, whether it be Gmail, Outlook, Zoho, Yahoo Mail, Media, YouTube, Debian Art, Spotify, Twitch. And then travel, booking, Expedia. Hotels.com, things like that. You can sign in if you want, create an account, bring over your bookmarks. It's just a different web browser. But like I said, I've used it before in the past, changed the home screen, and ignored this Become a Pro, and it works just fine. That's up to you if you want to support them and their development. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And then we come over here to their file manager. Let's go ahead and open that up, and it'll be Thunar. Look at how quick that opens up, guys. You just click on it and it pops right up. And this is in a virtual machine with just three gigabytes of RAM and two CPUs issued. So if you've got something, like I said, that's 15, 20 years old and you want to throw this on it, I think this is going to make that very functional. And with Thunar, you've got your usual suspects over here. You've got your home folders right here. And then that note that we got at the beginning when we booted up it says the readmes, open up, look here. You got Devon release notes, install and upgrade tips installed DOS software, installed packages. You can click on the DOS software and it'll come down here and tell you what is installed. And then over here, you could also click on the installed packages and it'll let you know all the packages that are installed out of the box. Now, a lot of people are gonna say, man, that is a big download. It was 3.8 gigabytes. But you gotta take into account that if you have a machine that's 15 to 20 years old, and you install this operating system on it, it's already pre-packaged with a bunch of software that you're going to want to use or need to use to make that machine useful again. So they've already went through that for you, and you don't have to spend hours downloading the info. You can take it, put it on a 15 to 20-year-old PC, install it, and you're ready to go out of the box. So that's Thunar File Manager. Let's close out of that. Then you come back down here. You've got your internet. And then, of course, you've got your notes. You click on your note. It'll bring up a note. You can take it, do whatever you want to there. If you want to save it, move it over here so you don't forget something. So that just gives you different options there. Then you have global search. You can search documents, audio, actions, apps, places, documents, pretty much anything you want to search. That would come in handy. And then below that, you have your battery. Now, something I do want to show you is they have three corners right here, and they have 
actions assigned to those corners, but you don't have to hot corner it. All you got to do is come up here and hover. And right here, you've got player controls. You've got multimedia applications, play DVD, audio CD, Pi Radio, play music from YouTube, and then, of course, your sound settings. And then if you come down here, you have calculator, mouse pad, Nota Trans, which is a translation tool, Wikipedia search, QR select, output QR codes, MPV, scholar, dictionary, screenshot tool, and then, of course, your clip color. And then over here on the right, if you just hover down, you've got all four workspaces. So they make this very easy, very quick, and very functional out of the box. Now what we're going to take a look at is all the applications that come pre-installed out of the box. So let's go to the app menu, and you come up here, you've got favorites, recently used, all accessories. One thing I want to look at in the terminal real quick is I want to do a Neo Fetch and go ahead and maximize that, and it lets you know Devon GNU Linux ASC2 i686 VirtualBox 4.9.0-8-RT-686-PAE. It is 32-bit environment, but remember, it doesn't have the 4 gigabyte restriction. XFCE, and down here, you can look at the memory. At present, we are using 252 megabytes with the terminal open. Out of almost the 3 gigabytes I have issued, it's extremely light, very light. Back down to the application menu. Now, if we go to accessories, you've got alarm clock, blue proximity, bulk rename, catfish file search, Compton, DOS navigator, file manager for DOS files. Image viewer, larger fonts, menu editor, mouse pad, notes, screenshot, task manager. I mean, this thing comes fully ready to go. You won't have to do much. XF burn, then you could go to command line. You've got A book, A1, Alpine, Alsa Mixer, Aptitude. You've got all these command line tools for all these different applications. MUT, Python, Translator, Worms. Then go to development. You've got Blue Griffin. Brandy, Gambus, Genie, Icon Browser, Megazooks, QB64 Programming, Slade, over to Education, BK Kim, G Periodic, LibreOffice Math, Fismo, Reinteract, Stellarium, Games, Commodore 64 Emulator, Nintendo DS Emulator, you've got DOSBox, it's a DOS Application Emulator, Joystick, you can set your controller up if you want to use it, Kega Fusion, Linux Wars, Mind Test, which is a open source version basically of Minecraft, Moopin64, Rubik's Cube Game, Pybic, interesting. Then you've got QChoyPad, that helps you if for some reason the other program doesn't get your controller set up, RetroArch, Stella for old Atari 2600 platform games, ZSNES for Super Nintendo. What I want to see real quick is how quick Mind Test loads up. That's pretty quick. We'll just go New World, go to Test, hit Enter, and it's creating and it's done, and it loads up. I would have to do some adjustments to my mouse because my mouse DPI is probably too high for the game, but it loads up, and you're ready to start playing pretty quick. So let's go up here and close out of that. Exit to OS. Go back down to your app menu. You've got graphics. you got Agave. you got AZ Painter, Bird Font, Blender, Demo, Digicam, FreeCAD. There's GIMP. You've got GIMP out of the box. Let's see how long it takes for GIMP to load. Because those of you who use GIMP know sometimes it takes a while to load because it has to pre-initialize everything. That's pretty impressive, guys. That's really impressive. Okay, now that it has initialized, let's go back over, go to graphics, and let's try loading again and see if it has everything loaded and makes it quicker. Yep, a lot quicker. Less than five seconds. All right, let's go back down to the application. Graphics, we were at GIMP. Then you've got Inkscape, you've got Image Magic, you've got Krita, Mesh Lab, My Paint, Paint Pro, Peak, Pencil 2D, Shotwell, Scribus. I mean, this thing is just loaded with software, guys. And what a lot of people are going to say when they watch this video is, big deal, it's loaded with software. All you got to do is zip over, download it, and you're ready to go. That's nothing special. Quite honestly, it is special if you think about it. This is a 32-bit environment. It's designed for 15 to 20-year-old PCs. The last thing you want to do with a 15 to 20-year-old PC is install an operating system on it and then spend days downloading software. You can install this. It's less than 4 gigabytes, and it's got everything you need. It just makes it that much simpler. It's an out-of-the-box experience that'll make that older PC useful again. Then we come to Internet. 
You got Blue Griffin, FileZilla, Gnome PPP. You've got Cody out of the box, Netrunner, Pale Moon, Thunderbird for your mail client, WICD Network Manager that if your older machine does have Wi-Fi, you can use it. That's awesome. Multimedia, you got 3DVD, Cheese, Audacity, Handbrake, Hydrogen, Isomaster. Look at that. VLC, you just have tons of things. Office, you've got Abbey Word, Calibre, Libre Office Suite, Orange Calendar, My Notes, PDF Shuffler, Other, Enable Bluetooth, three different shells, Play CD or DVD, Settings. Let's check out the Settings. Settings Manager, let's open that up. Let's go ahead and maximize that so everybody can see it. Here are your settings. You've got Appearance, Desktop, File Manager, MX Tweak Tool. That is awesome. They included the MX Tweak Tool in this distribution. Preferred Applications, System Locales, Removable Drives, Mouse and touchpad, keyboard, settings editor. So you have your regular set of settings that you get with most Linux distributions. And this just makes it easier to customize it the way you like. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Back down to the app manager. We've already looked at settings. So then you've got system. Then you've got bleach bit, boot, Commodore 64, Disk image, eject, gpart, GW package manager. If you do find a Debian package online and you want to download and install it, you can do it right through there. Make sure it's 32-bit, though. HTOP, iDevice manager, Midnight Commander, MX user manager, MX USB. They've got a lot of MX tools in here. That's awesome. Night mode, pictures, PsychOS update, task manager. It's just packed with things. Look, if you've got a 15 to 20-year-old PC and you want to make it useful again, I suggest you zip over, download this, throw it on that machine, and give it a test drive. You're not going to lose anything, and it's going to make that machine productive again. This is extremely lightweight, and if you have a newer machine and you put this on it, it's just going to fly. Let me know what you think about PsychOS. Is it something you might download, take for a test drive, or better yet, throw it on a USB or burn it to a CD and put it on a 15 to 20-year-old PC? Let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today, please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you do like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching the video, and I will see you in the next video.